Broadcasting from the Any Hour Services Podcast Studios, I'm your host, Mike Wilson, and you, you, on this episode, I was about to end the show. I was about to say, and you've been listening to, but no, it's on this episode of In the House, we're going to be talking about whole house fans. Let's go. In the House is a podcast about the major systems in the house, electrical, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. Each week, I'm joined by a panel of experts. We pick a topic and we discuss it in depth. It's meant to be informative and hopefully bring you some value. Today, I've got Gavin back with us. I got Shane back with us. They're part of the management team over the electrical department at Any Hour Services. And um, last time we had an electrical episode, we actually talked about attic fans. And today, we're going to be talking about whole house fans. So let's just start with what's the difference between attic fans and whole house fans and for everyone listening we always have like a little bit of a conversation before the show starts um to talk about okay who's going to be the one that like fields the first question because in our early episodes i didn't realize that that was something that we needed to like discuss and we would ask a question and then there would just be crickets and it would just sit there for a little bit. So now we try and decide who's going to talk first. But today, you know, Shane and Gavin are both such an aggressive talker. They both want the spotlight. And so what we have to do is they're actually going to play rock, paper, scissors to figure out who gets to answer the first question. But <laughs> we need to establish the rules because there's always a little bit of like when you're going to do paper, rock, scissors, some people go on three. Some people shoot like after three on four. So. You guys work it out and give us some paper, rock, scissors, figure out who's going to go first. And are you going to do just one and done or are you going to go best two out of three? <laughs> I like best two out of three because it takes a little bit of the chance out of it because there is a skill to this game. Well, does the winner go first or go second? Ooh, winner gets oh, to choose. Man, there we go. <laughs> winner gets to choose. So, all right. How y'all going to how y'all gonna officiate this? We're going two, one or three? Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Right. Okay, but one best, oh, three. best out of one, or best out. Okay, yeah, three. He wants three. to go three. Okay, okay I'll keep. The, I'll keep the score. Y'all keep going. Okay, so calling the play by play. <laughs> Gavin comes out really strong with a pair of scissors to start with. Shane slips up, well, slips some the paper. Everybody goes rock first. That's why you always go paper. <laughs> well, not a, you. Just learned Gavin. something, Shane. Okay, so round one. <laughs> Goes to Gavin. Scissors <laughs> takes paper. Starting round two. Ding, 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 go. Ooh. <laughs> All right. This time got we, we got a heated <laughs> battle here going. He, I think, I don't know if that was a mind game that Shane was playing, saying everybody goes rocks first because <laughs> Gavin comes in with the rock. But Gavin may have been thinking, like, oh, well, Shane was expecting the rock first and I threw him for oh, a loop. So now I'm going to give him the rock second. <laughs> but Shane goes with paper again. <laughs> Gets Gavin, who goes with the rock. So now, scores tied 1-1. One, one. We're going to have to go to the final round to figure out there who's going to answer our question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ready? Go. Oh, folks. Oh, man. We're going to round four. It was a tie. Let's go. Oh, and we have a victor. <laughs> you can't see it, but on the podcast, just listen and imagine me raising Gavin's arm as the victor of the Rochambeau. Lucky. Okay, so according to the rules that were established at the beginning of the bout, Gavin, would you? It's, it's like the coin toss, like at the Super Bowl now. <laughs> would you like to kick or receive? <laughs> I'll kick. Okay, so now we got to. Does that mean you're answering the question? Yeah, I'll answer the question. <laughs> He's answering the question. <laughs> no, I'll answer. you're answering. <laughs> yeah, I'll, All right. So <laughs> now, uh, attic fans. So mm -hmm. let's start with a question. <laughs> What's the difference between an attic fan and a whole house fan? Okay, so attic fan is more circulating the outside air into the attic okay. and taking the hot air out of the attic. Okay. Whole home is taking cold air from outside in the basement, circulating it through your home and expelling all the heat out of the into the attic and out of the attic. Gotcha. Attic fan is exhausting <clears throat> stale hot air out of the attic, bringing in fresh air from outside. And a whole house fan is expelling the warm, stale air that is collected at the top of the house, getting that out, trying to pull the cooler, fresher air uh, up into the upper part of the house. So a couple of questions. I grew up in Louisiana and we had an attic fan. And I remember, and I don't, we had an air conditioner too. So I'm not sure 
Maybe the air conditioner was added later, but we would use the attic fan instead of the air conditioner sometimes. So we would like turn that air, the attic fan on. And this was a beast, man. It was in the hallway. It had louvered doors. You would turn it on and go <laughs> And they would like in Mission Impossible, like it open up. I think Tom Cruise may have been able to fit down in between those louvers and it would just start roaring and it. But it felt really awesome because you would feel a cool breeze go across the house as long as the doors and stuff were open. So has the technology evolved or are we still talking about big louvered doors and a roaring fan? It's gotten better. It's gotten <laughs> That's better. Good. I've seen some of the old ones and it was like, wow, what is this? So with these <laughs> attic fans, um, do you, we talked about it pulling colder air from the basement. Uh, but I growing up, we wouldn't run the attic fan and the air conditioner at the same time. Is it still the same way? But you, you describe pulling cool air from the basement upstairs. Like do, do you run it while the air conditioner is going? Do you need to open windows? Talk to me about how, how it works and how people should be using this thing. Well, the difference is we talk about pulling cool air from the basement. Yep. That all depends on what time you're turning that on. Because okay. uh, most places during the middle of the day, if you use your attic fan or your whole house fan, it's going to do you no good. So the, the best time to use an attic fan is going to be usually in Utah, and maybe some places are different. You talked about living in North Carolina, wherever you were. Mm-hmm. Louisiana. Of, Louisiana, same thing. Mm, easy. Uh, <laughs> close enough. <laughs> that ain't the same thing. Okay. But back there, you're dealing with a lot of humidity. Okay. So um, if you're just pulling humidity back into the home, it's going to be different. So I'm sure there may be different times of the day. But here in Utah, we usually have really dry air. Okay. During the middle of the day, it's going to be really hot, so they're worthless. Um, during the evening times, it cools down. So at that point... The only time you want to use these fans is when the outside air is cooler than what your home is. Gotcha. So uh, evenings, middle of the night, early mornings. So it seems like evening, the, the house has had a chance to like heat up and you're exhausting that hot, stale air. That seems like a good time to, mm-hmm. to run that. Um, do you need to crack windows or is it you're just trying to pull out? You're just trying to, I mean, how do, how do you do it? So usually here in Utah, uh, we like to open a, a lot of states don't have basements, but here in Utah, most homes have a basement. So that's gonna be a a room that's below the level of the ground a lot of times. Um, So we wanna open those rooms there just so it pulls that air through the whole house. Open all the rooms or just like open a window? Just a few of them. Um, Depending on your attic fan size, some of these attic fans pull a lot of air. Some homes have multiple whole house fans put in in different rooms. So we want to bring that air from the basement. We want to circulate through that through the whole house. So as it's pulling up, it's going to circulate through every level of the house. Uh, heat rate rises to the highest point, so we're going to want to pull it out from there. And as we push this cooler air out through the whole house, it, also, it pushes that cooler up into the attic too, which actually cools your attic. So they're kind of uh, they're an upgrade from just an attic fan because you're actually cooling the house plus the attic with cooler air. Well, some people, I would think, wouldn't want to spend money cooling the attic when it's not a living space. So, I mean, is there, are they programmed to only run a certain amount of time or do you have to say, okay, cool, that's long enough. At what point are you like, should you not like, how long do you run it? Like, are, are they a, um, a, what's it called? Like a thermostat control? Is it a timer? How are they controlled? Uh, most of these aren't on thermostats. They can be, but a lot of these are handheld remotes you can put on those mm-hmm. because this attic fans up in your ceiling. You can hook them to a switch. Um, a lot of them have timers on them. I, I, you push a timer, it goes on for two hours. Uh, some are smart timers. Um, it's going to come on at two, three in the morning and come on for a couple hours. So there's a lot of different ways of switching these. I like how you said, um, you know, somebody might have multiple um, fans in a house. And I was thinking like, I guess if you, especially if this is, I'm assuming this isn't something that comes standard in homes. This is a aftermarket thing. You decide that you want to do this. If you've lived in the home, it gives you the opportunity to be strategic. If you've got hot spots in the house, like if you've got a couple of rooms, maybe a South facing room that like gets way more sun exposure and, uh, is it the south side of the house that gets more exposure? Yeah, usually. That's in my house. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so anyway, um, you know, put it there and pull some of that exhaust, some of that stale air from that particular room. Are there areas where you shouldn't put it? I, 
you're usually going to put it in. It's going to be going into your attic. So, sorry, I meant, are there rooms that you shouldn't put it in? Like, for instance, I have a one level house. I mean, it's got a basement, but like the main level, it's just attic on top of it. And the air, honestly, the area that gets the hottest in my house is when like um, we're cooking. And so the kitchen is, but I don't know that you would want to like, it's different than an exhaust hood, right? So you wouldn't want to use it or would you want to use it in a kitchen well, most places or do you put we, it right outside the kitchen? I, most I mean, places we put them are in the highest points because that air is going to go to the highest point of the house. So we sometimes talk about multiple rooms. Sometimes they'll have rooms that have uh, big vaults in them. So the door only, go, only goes up eight feet, but then your vault goes up to 15 feet. So all that hot air gets trapped up there. We want mm. a way to get that air out of there. Um, another thing I was just thinking about is uh, you talked about your old fan, how it sounded like an airplane going off. Yeah. Um, those older fans that the actual motor was right there. So right where those little vents opened up, that's where your motor sits. These newer fans are pretty cool because you have a duct. It's usually eight to 10 feet long and the motor is on the end of the duct. So your motor is no longer right at, right at your attic point. It's back up in your attic and they're very, very quiet. So you really don't hear them anymore. Which do you see more people installing the attic fan or the whole house fan? I think lately uh, we're getting more attic whole house fans just because they're newer on the market. Um, people are learning more about them. Are they newer or is it just like a resurgence? Because I mean, I'd say a resurgence, yeah. but they're made in a better way. They're quieter. Gotcha. They're, they're 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 different that way. But yeah, they do the same thing as yours. So a new yours design, did. and so yes. now they're kind of gaining popularity mm -hmm. again. Um, we talked about only using an attic fan when the ambient temperature outside is lower. Whole than, house fan, right? Sorry, yes. <laughs> that's why we're doing this is to like explain the difference and then I'm sitting here mixing them up. Uh, yes, that's. I'm glad you caught that. So you only use the whole house fan when um, the ambient temperature outside is uh, cool. less than mm -hmm. inside the house. You know, it's interesting because this fan is in the attic and growing up, the whole house fan that we had, we always just called an attic fan because yeah. we turn the switch on and it's in the attic. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, sorry, people listening. Um, let's see. As far as we, we talked about the control, what, what kind of maintenance do you need to do on these fans? These whole house fans. Uh, as far as maintenance, you're kind of the same as you are on the attic fan. Uh, there's not very much maintenance that you need to do on them. Um, most people don't get up in their attics very often. Um, I'd probably call a professional to get up there. If you get up in an attic and you have insulation and you step in the wrong spot, you're going to end up probably in the room down below you. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, you, you got to know what you're doing if you're going to get up in an attic. But they can. They can be checked. Um, you're going to know if they're not working because they won't be pulling in the air. Gotcha. If you ever hear any noises or sounds coming from them, you should have them checked. But for the most part, they're pretty maintenance free. Gotcha. Um, so there's not there's not necessarily a is there a process because you're only using it like you're not going to use it in the winter because it's going to be colder out well i guess it would be colder outside so if your house is too hot maybe you crank that <laughs> furnace up a little too high <laughs> or something you're like oh, we got to cool the house off i guess if it was thanksgiving and christmas when you're cooking you and it's like overheating the kitchen and the little hood above the microwave just ain't doing it or maybe you got it turned it's just recirculating the heat back into the kitchen or if you like burn my thanksgiving house. dinner yeah there oh, you go. oh there you go out. get the Take get the smoke and stuff quick. out <laughs> so it's good for homes that you want to cool down when it's hot or if you don't cook very well <laughs> and you burn things <laughs> often and you're setting your smoke alarms off. And that I'm gonna be honest, our, our, our kitchen smoke detector used to go off and it seemed like it would go off based off of heat, not off of smoke. Cause I wasn't burning things that often, but <laughs> I don't know if anyone listening is, is like this, but if the smoke detector <laughs> in your kitchen or closest to your kitchen has been removed or the battery has been taken out, maybe look into this <laughs> so because you, you need that if you're if you're burning the food enough that your smoke detector is going off that often that you're removing it, it might be a fire hazard going on in that kitchen and be better to put that thing there uh how long uh do they last i mean is it a long product are you replacing this every five years ten years 
From what I've seen, uh, they're long lasting. Okay. Uh, they're they're a good made quality product. So, is there any other work in the house that needs to be done? Like if you're putting this thing up in the attic, are, are there things that have to be done in the house to make sure? Like, do you how do you size these? Are there different sizes? Are there like what are if someone's thinking about getting an attic fan what are the things they need to think about not an attic fan oh, so i did it again <laughs> it's that it's that louis see that's the difference louisiana we're just going to keep saying attic fan <laughs> north carolina they'll probably pick up that that is supposed to be a whole house fan uh so on this whole house fan if someone's thinking about getting a whole house fan uh what types of things do they need to consider you have to consider the size for of your home okay so obviously the cubic feet how much you can pull um, you have to be aware that you're going to have to open the windows downstairs. You can't just turn it on with everything closed. It's not going to do very good with that. So there is a lot of manual work with it. You can't just let it turn on and gotcha. not have anything open. So. Okay. Uh, Shane? I was going to say also electrically, uh, you've always, with, with both of these fans, you've got to make sure you have the electricity going to both of them. So that can be a little bit of a cost if you don't have the right electricity going there. And also switches for these things. For the average, like whole home phone, home whole home phone, whole house fan, um, is it 120, 220? Like, what kind of electricity are you able to just pop off of a circuit? If there's an outlet downstairs, can you just run power off that outlet and pop it up into the attic? Like, what kind of require? Do they take a dedicated circuit? What are our requirements here? So one of the biggest uh, pluses of of having a whole house fan is uh, the electricity savings you will get from them. Um, if you look at an air conditioner for a house, some of these bigger ones, you can be up to even in the dollars an hour on some of these great big ones. Whole house fans, uh, they don't cost very much to run. They pull just a couple amps. So uh, you can actually say, or they, or they say that you can save about 50 to 70% off your air conditioning bill. That's not gonna be in every home. That's, uh, that's under optimal conditions there. Sure. You can save quite a bit. Um, but are do you find that most of the time you're having does it require a dedicated circuit? No, you can pull off with other things with these. Okay, um, perfect. So you just find a circuit that's not being used a lot in the house. Well, and- I guess we shouldn't say that. Um, you should probably <laughs> have a, a qualified electrician make sure that there is a, enough amperage on that circuit to run it correctly. Because some circuits are already overloaded. Gotcha. If it's already overloaded, no, that's something you don't want to put it on. Do you typically put them on a fifteen or twenty amp circuit or thirty? Usually 15 or 20. 15 or 20. Fine. Depends on the size of the fan. Um, well, whole home phone. Why do I keep saying whole home phone? <laughs> Is there even such a thing? It used to be. It used yeah. to be. You get a whole home, there whole house just, phone. There was just one. <laughs> uh, funny story. Uh, I remember we used to have you know, the, you'd have the phone and sometimes you'll see memes online now, but you have the phone that has like the really long before there were cordless phones. You have exactly the really <laughs> long spiral cord and it get like twisted up. If you stretch it too long, then it would like hook over. And, um, the way when the phone used to ring, I think about like when we were kids, the phone would ring and we would race each other <laughs> to the phone to like answer it. I remember one time we were racing and I grew up with all sisters and we were racing to the, to the, uh, whatever it's called the phone. It was hanging on a wall, still crystal clear in my mind. We're running and there's only a finite amount of space and it's like an action movie. (laughs) They bump me with their hip and I slam into the oven. (laughs) They got to the phone and I'm sitting there writhing on the ground in pain. Couldn't have been a pleasant conversation for, you know, whoever's listening. Ah! But uh, they beat me that time. So anyway. And nowadays you look at it and ignore it. Yeah, I don't answer the phone anymore. (laughs) Especially if it's not programmed in my phone. Whenever I have somebody new that like wants to try and like call me or whatever, I'm like, text me first. Let me know you're about to call. Ideally, you'll let me know the number you're going to call from so that I know to like answer the phone. Otherwise, you won't get me even on my voicemail. I don't know. I don't know the last time I listened to a voicemail. I I, uh, I actually I wait until someone texts me and says your voicemail's full. Then I go in and I just delete all the voicemails without even listening to them. And uh, even if you call me today, my voicemail actually says. 
I'm not going to listen to this. It's better to text me. <laughs> and people still leave a voicemail. So go figure. I don't know. Maybe that's my way of uh, like weeding them out. Like if you can't understand that, then it's better for you to leave me a voicemail. <laughs> And that's the show. Do <laughs> you have anything else about uh, Whole House fans that you think people should know? I just think that uh, if you're looking for an option to, to cool your house, uh, mm -hmm. they, are, they are a great option. Um, they do save you a lot of power. And uh, really to, to get that air, I mean, we look at right now we're in this COVID craziness and uh, everything they're talking about, airflow, filterization. So uh, you get into furnaces, there's a lot of cool filters we can put on, but the more you can circulate air, I mean, they talk a lot about being outside is a better thing because that air is being circulated. So the whole house fan really is the best way to actually, because a furnace doesn't circulate your air, it gives you the same air back just through a filter. This actually brings all new air in, gets it out. And so if you're looking yeah, at that. The EPA says the air quality inside our home can be three to five times worse mm -hmm. than it is outside. Yeah. And, um, they do make HVAC systems that can like bring fresh air inside, but that option to upgrade that is super <laughs> expensive. I've, I've looked into that and yeah, it, it really is good to get fresh air coming into the home. I mean, you think about like, you know, when you're doing spring cleaning or when the weather's nice outside, you open the windows to get like, you know, a little breeze and some fresh air coming in because it, it feels nice. It, it freshens up the house a little bit. So if, if, uh, if you're interested in a whole house fan, do a little bit of research. Is there are there questions they should ask the the company or the electrician? Does it have to be an electrician that installs it? The electrical part it should be. Okay, gotcha. So is that so if someone was looking at getting a whole house fan, is it typically um, an electrician that they would want to call or do they call an HVAC company? Where where do they go to look if they're I mean, obviously, if you're in Utah, you can look up any hour services. We do this, but you know, to bring value to other people, is it typically okay? I want a whole house fan. They think ventilation. They might think HVAC company, mm -hmm. but should they call an electrician instead, or are either one of those fine? I think you. Yeah, I think uh, HVAC. They're uh, they're more in, in tune with the cubic feet and how mm -hmm. what can be moved, so they're a little bit better with that. I would say. Gotcha. So. So anything else? I think we're good. Awesome. Well, that is the show all about whole house fans and whole house phones. <laughs> Luckily, we don't have the, the, the ER hospitalizations over racing to the whole house phone are way down nowadays. <laughs> you know, cancer Almost from the nice. 5G and brain tumors, that's up. Oh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> allegedly, there's no proof for science to back that up yet. Uh, anyway, that's the show. We'll be back next Tuesday with a new episode of In the House. If you'd like to know more about Any Hour Services, visit anyhourservices.com. I'd like to thank Gavin and Shane for being here today. I've been your host, Mike Wilson, and you've been listening to In the House. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>